What's going on, everyone? It's Jason here, Two Flippin' Dudes, with Chris, my co-host. Thanks for joining our show tonight. Chris, how's it going? It's going well. Good to see you, Jason. What's up, everyone? So, uh, yeah, our third episode tonight of Two Flippin' Dudes. We are rocking and rolling. Got the weekly show going here. We've already got some people jumping in. So welcome to everyone watching, whether you're watching live with us tonight or whether you're catching us on the recorded, um, I guess, after the show video. Got Rocky here as well. Chris, how are things going this week? How was your Christmas? Christmas was great. It was um, it was a weird, I guess, kind of a weird week because I ended up and working a lot and using some of that, I don't know, other people's downtime to catch up on some things. So I don't know. It was kind of a, an interesting week, but it was nice to relax. It was definitely a, a chill holiday. I definitely saw less people for the holiday than I typically would. Um, but you know, the you take the good with the bad with that sort of stuff. How was your holiday? It was really good. Um, we had uh, three different homes to split between, so um, you know, went out Christmas Eve, Christmas, and then Sunday, and just got some yeah some downtime as well. It was just a really good time with family and. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to come back from extra days off a holiday like that. But uh, how's how's uh, this week been going for you as far as, you know, sourcing and selling and things like that with eBay? Yeah, for me, I've sort of been, um, you know, this is my fourth week of being full time reselling. So and last week was kind of a weird week because of the holiday. Right. Um, so just been trying to find some rhythm and routine. And I feel like uh, I found a little bit of that this week, which is great. I'm sort of settling into a plan of, of sourcing on, on Mondays and Wednesdays, uh, Wednesdays, because that's half off clothing day at my local Salvation Army. So that was today. Um, so I take advantage of that. And Monday seems like a good day to hit some Goodwills because they change the tags on Sundays. Um, locally here, our Goodwills yeah, do. do one color tag 50% off. And that switches, that rotates to the new color on Sundays. So typically on Mondays, I'm able to pull some stuff that's 50% off that's been sitting around for a few weeks. So that's nice. been my routine and then listing on the other days. So the one thing I need to get a little bit better at is uh, is, is being more disciplined with listing. I'm getting out there and finding stuff. I just uh, sometimes Dude, I'm not as good at getting it, all, getting it all up on eBay. That's the hard part right there. It's like it's so easy to come home with bags of stuff and then... To have to list it's like uh i gotta do this so i can go back out again <laughs> absolutely yeah. absolutely is this been uh what's the last couple weeks been like for you are you hustling are you kind of chilling half speed 25 percent speed what's happening yeah i would say um it, it's been uh last couple weeks has been a little low key last week it, it kind of, was kind of hard to get into the mindset of hustle just with a couple days off this week coming off the holiday was similar just monday even thinking through like, man, you know, I usually go out as well. I didn't want to go out. Um, and I just kind of forced myself to get in the car and I actually had one of the better hauls I've had in a while. It was kind of glad that I ended up going cause I was debating staying, just working on some videos listing and, uh, had one of the better hauls from the last several weeks. So, uh, definitely glad that I forced myself to get in the car and, and take off. I mean, I only went to three stores, but pulled in quite the haul. So, um, yeah, it was a good week. And today I listed about 20 or 30 items and, um, just kind of chilled the rest of the afternoon on some other things. So yeah, pretty, pretty, uh, I, I guess steady week starting off, but, um, yeah, always hard to come back from that holiday when you've had extra time and a lot of food that you're eating and just kind of in the slumber mode. <clears throat> I totally hear that. I'm glad you had a good haul. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Well, let's go ahead and get started, Chris. Do you want to tell us what this show is? Yeah, so welcome everyone to Two Flippin' Dudes. This is episode three of a weekly show. This is for resellers, it's for aspiring resellers, and it's for the reselling curious out there. Every week, Jason and I get together for an hour, two full-time resellers, just to talk about what's going on in our business, and we invite you along for the ride. Uh, we touch on current reseller events. We take a lot of your viewer questions, so get those questions coming. We want to answer those. And because we're both competitive, uh, we'll play a flipping game. That's Jason versus I. I am your two-time defending champion, so I'll be defending my crown or trying my best to defend my crown tonight. Looking forward to that. Most of all, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah, you are undefeated, which is wild. Two and oh. But I'm going to fight back tonight and see what I can do. 
So yeah, as Chris alluded to, if you have a question, please go ahead and put those in the comments in the chats right now. We're going to uh, uh, be getting to those a little later. You may have some reselling questions or even just questions in general, though we do want to focus on reselling and all things reselling. If you have a personal question for us, you know, it may get answered as well. So um, yeah, please go ahead and start putting those questions in for us tonight. I want to go ahead and just look at a few people that are in. If you're uh, in the live with us um, tonight as the show is airing, tell us where you're watching from. So I see some names in here from last week and the past few weeks, but I just wanted to go ahead and um, shout out a couple of people that are watching tonight. We've got uh, Trisha. She was here for the last couple of weeks. Bill and Ginger, I recognize you all. Elaine, welcome to the show. <clears throat> you see anyone in there, Chris? I see Terry from Virginia. Shout out, shout out to Elaine. Elaine, I shouted out on my TikTok on one of my videos today because she found this total fire Dolce Gabbana like leopard print thing. And actually, interesting note too, Elaine is local to the Tampa area as well. So uh, she and I end up hitting up some of the same thrift stores. Um, oh, wow. We never bumped into each other. But um, anyway, good to see you in the, in the chat, Elaine. Thanks for watching. Ha speaking of that, have you ever bumped into someone at a store and they're like, hey, I know you from TikTok or... It's, it's never happened. Nope. I mean, I sometimes bump into people who acknowledge that I'm a reseller and then want to ask me 4,000 questions, but <laughs> never anybody who's sort of like recognized me as, as someone who's like a, you know, on you know, that shares this online. Like, yeah. 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 I had, I had someone actually reach out and say, I saw you in the thrift store, but I didn't come up and say hi. I was like, you should have said hi, you know? So yeah, I see Neb is in here as well. Um, Brent, I'm from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Brent, welcome to the show. You're not far from me. I am actually in uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas. I'm not sure if you know that, but not far down the road at all. So we've got quite the crew in here tonight. And as mentioned, go ahead and get those reseller questions in if you have them so we can um, take any questions that you may have. Well, as we always do at about this time, we're going to go ahead and show you a couple items that we found. So Chris, I'll just kick it to you. Um, usually we take this time and just highlight a couple brands that we're purchasing this week. So Chris, what have you found this week that you want to show us? I'm going to start off with some mug life. Everybody loves mug life. So I actually picked this up uh, this afternoon when I was out at a Salvation Army. So, right, a little lemon, some, you know, some flowers on there, right? Like, okay, whatever, just like any old mug. But we got starbucks barista oh wow i wouldn't have pegged that as a starbucks mug <clears throat> no i i just picked it up because it was like oh that looks like a nice mug and i was just i've been trying to get into the habit of like picking up mugs turning them over and and, and seeing what they say on the bottom and i was definitely rewarded with this one it seems like it's pretty rare it's marked 2002 so um i don't know that it's how much money it's worth i found one other comp where it was like this one in a pair it was a lemon one and a plum one and together they were they sold for 45 bucks for the two of them but i haven't seen any sales just for mr lemon here but yeah i was excited to pick this one up got to be curious when you're out there pick stuff up look at right. it check it out if it looks like it might be a nice thing pick it up you never know follow that intuition look it up take that extra step so I mean, I'm guessing just the, uh, the, I couldn't tell if that was a pear or a lemon, but that print on there, you, you picked it up, looked at the bottom and then, um, was it because it was a Starbucks, you just picked it up automatically or, uh, did you, what were you thinking there? Listen, I mean, I'm not an expert on Starbucks by any stretch. There's probably uh, some folks in the, in the comment section in the chat that know a lot more about Starbucks than me. It's just something I've started to sort of nibble on a little bit and try to learn about. Uh, this one was priced at two bucks, I think. So yeah. I feel like from what I've learned so far, you're going to be able to at least get eight or ten dollars for for a Starbucks mug. So that particular one, I just I was like, well, it's unique. It's different. Um, it's not just plain Jane. So maybe I'd yeah. be able to get something more like, I don't know, the 15, the 20 dollar range for that one. So, yeah, for sure. I think the O2 was something, you know, the fact that it, I find a lot that say like 2016 or 2017, um, I think an O2 uh, makes it, a, you know, some collectors out there might be looking for that particular one and it might be hard to find. Yeah, I will say that's like when I go to the mug section, that's the the first thing I'm looking for, are those Starbucks mugs, the UR here's especially or the like ge geographical um, location located ones. So, yeah, good find. <clears throat> You want me to show an item that I found this week? I'll, I'll 
I'll stay. Oh, look at that. The uh, speaking of I you, are you? you in, I saw you sipping on your Denver one in the pre-show, so I went into my stash and I grabbed out my uh, my Florida uh, collection Starbucks mugs. Yeah, so we got Colorado and Florida represented, and the and the additional fruit Starbucks mug there. I'll show this item. I actually picked up since we're on the mug train. Um, I got these two M and M mugs. Paid a dollar a piece for these. Uh, the brand I don't think is anything worth mentioning that I know of. Gallery. But um, yeah, they're the different colors. Uh, should get, I think, for both of these, that twenty to thirty dollar range. If I sell them as a set, which I probably will, um, just to kind of keep shipping down. But um, I was on the fence with those, but I just thought, you know, M and M's, they're cool, they're older. Let's go for it. Two bucks. I mean, worst case, I lose two bucks, right? That's true. And you might have a cool mug sitting, or two cool mugs sitting around for a few years too. Um, did you look up comps on those or you just kind of go with your gut on them? Yeah, I did. Um, I looked up comps and I think most, most people are selling them for about 10 bucks a piece. So that's why I'm going to bundle them together and try and get that 20 to $30 range of shipping. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty stoked about, about, uh, those mugs there. And by what the else? way, that gallery brand, um, I actually just sold a couple of star Wars mugs earlier this week that were actually that gallery brand too. Oh, wow. Nice. What, uh, what'd they go for? Um, I think the two mugs went for, I don't know, something like 16 bucks plus shipping. Okay. It's not bad. Right. I paid a dollar a piece for them, you know, and if yeah. worst case scenario, it's star Wars, star Wars. I love star Wars. So if they didn't sell, I would have been sipping out of them. So, <laughs> and they would have made like great gifts too for, I mean, I have a lot of friends who are like big star Wars fans. So if those sat around for six months, I could just, ship them off in a box and say, Hey, look at this thing I bought for you today. I knew you, I knew you would love it. I thought about you when I saw it. Yeah. You know, it's funny because when we started reselling or at least in my, you know, when I started, I just would not touch the China dinnerware mugs section. And now it's like, even just telling my wife last night, like, man, that's a really good section to go into now. I just, it's like probably up there second or third section I check as well as like clothing. So what right, I, I got yeah. what's that i got more finds if you're ready yeah yeah go for it show us so one of my favorite brands that i haven't found in a while probably since i moved to florida in july i haven't found this brand i don't know if that tips you off if you know which brand i'm talking about i uh i have an idea but <clears throat> go for it oh wow that wasn't what i was thinking mizzen and main nice is in a main, definitely one of my favorite brands. I don't think I've found this, this brand since I've been here, like I said. And uh, yeah, I mean, these shirts, you can tell when you feel them too. They're just like, a, it's like a polyester blend, like a performance dress shirt. People really love these things. This is probably a good, it's a good size too. Extra, extra large trim fit. Uh, I'm having a feeling that this thing will probably be 35 to $40. Uh, so nice little grab and, and usually a pretty quick sale right there. Nice. First Mizzen in Maine in Florida. That tag even looked different than what I've seen. Yeah, it was a little different. I've noticed a few different styles on their tags. Yeah, I'm psyched. I'll, get, I'll show that to the, to the viewers again. This is something that you might, may not have ever heard of before, but yeah. definitely a brand that you want to look out for. Mizzen in Maine is just a rare piece. I mean, gosh, Chris, how many, in, you know, in your reselling career, how many items have you found from them? I can probably count um, like four on my, you know, four total items. I think maybe four, maybe this is five. Um, and I didn't even learn about the brand until probably from you until like the springtime when I found my first one and looked it up. And then, uh, yeah, I've been pretty lucky. But like I said, it's been a drought. I haven't found one since I was in Denver. Yeah. Well, you and I are on the Mizzen and Main train because uh, uh, I picked up one this week as well on Monday. So no way. That's that's good for both of us. That's I mean, Mizzen and Main guys. That those of you that don't know, that brand will sell used. Those shirts will sell for I'd say a very minimum mid thirties, um, possibly in the forties, depending on color, material, and and just how great the condition is. But um, it's a very minimum thirty five and up. So if you can find that brand, great brand to find. But it is super rare. So I don't I don't know how long it's been around. I haven't really. I mean, I I think in the last year is when I heard about it. So. Don't know if it's a newer brand. It seems like it is, but because uh, I don't find a lot of old pieces from them. But yeah. 
All right, let's show you one that I've got. Let's see uh, those in the chat can see what this brand is based on the back tag there. You know what that is, Chris? Is that a Southern Tide? Southern Tide, it is. Um, these are just, I threw them down, but I'll show you the inside tag as well. Um, Southern Tide is, has come down. It's, it's kind of like a Vineyard Vines in my opinion, as far as um, Southern Tide goes for that little fish logo on the chest, whereas Vineyard Vines does the whale. Pretty similar like um, quality, but unfortunately they've been coming down some. So those blue shorts, I think I should get around like twenty to twenty-five dollars with shipping on That's those. Fine, yeah, good size too, or what? Uh, yeah, I think they're a larger size. Um, let's see here, thirty-eight. So yeah, good size, and they're like a blue seersucker. Um, like shorts, casual shorts. So yeah, great size. <clears throat> That's awesome. So I got another one to show you. And this one's in the spirit of like just appreciation for the reseller community and the spirit of uh, having growth mindset and continuing to learn. Picked up this brand, brand new to me brand, Mojo, Mojo. Mojo Sportswear Company. I had never heard of this until last week. And I don't I don't know who it was. I thought it might've been you, as, uh, but somebody shared this on their TikTok and reseller TikTok uh, uh -huh. and said that this was a bolo. So I actually found two of them today, uh, but the first one ended up having a pretty nasty stain. So I had to put it back. And then at the next oh, Salvation yeah. Army I went to, I found it again and it was almost the same exact shirt. It's a different color. So kind of interesting, but excited to, uh, to be learning from others. You know, we're uh, everybody, uh, we're all a lot smarter if we like learn from each other, right? There's no like single expert. You can't know all the brands and all the things right. and all the categories. So I thought I, I think, knew a lot about shirts and there I am. I got a, I got yeah. a new one. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And you know, the YouTube community, the TikTok, I would say for sure is, is a really great place. So for some of you in the live with us tonight, it's a great place to learn. I mean, even as Chris is mentioning, we're learning from other sellers. I mean, I watch, um, I've got a few people that I watch and learn more hard goods just because um, clothing is more my niche, but trying to pick up on brands that are uh, more hard good items. Um, and so it's always good to keep learning because obviously the more you learn, the more, more brands that you can throw in your back pocket and more items you have to find at thrift stores. So yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of questions come in. So those of you that are just jumping in, if you do have questions, please, please put them in the comments and we'll get to them. But uh, yeah, do you have anything else you want to show us tonight? Or looks like you do. Remember little, these? Little, oh yeah, for sure. I definitely had one of those for school. Yeah, a little, uh, they call them like a little six pack fridge, a little push button, slide that puppy open. So yeah, I usually don't pick up stuff like this, but I've actually wanted one of these for a long time. And uh -huh. I picked this up for... Looks like five bucks. Nice. And, uh, looks like the comps are like 15 to 25 bucks. There's a ton of them selling. Uh, so people, this is something people look out for. These things are pretty indestructible. They're pretty. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm going to list it high. And uh, if it doesn't sell, I'll have me a little, little cooler. <laughs> you know, that's funny because uh, I don't know if you got it from someone in particular, but I was watching ready, set, resell Ben on YouTube. And I think he found a, uh, a cooler like that. It was like a neon color. And ever since I watched that video, I'm like, I always check for those things. I haven't found any worth picking up, but um, yeah, that was a good tip. There was actually two of them at the Salvation Army, uh, but the other one was kind of like, it had like a big crack in it. So I didn't want to mess with it, but uh, yeah, I was excited. I mean, I, I could, I spotted it from like, you know, like, you know, 20 yards away too. It was like easy to see. Nice. We do have a few questions coming in now. Uh, let me see if I can find one. Ginger asks, have you heard of reselling on Shopify? Chris, have you heard about Shopify? Have you any experience there? Um, beyond knowing that it's a place that you can sell, I mean, and, and a place that you can buy, that's about all I know about it, to be honest with you. I don't know if, I don't know anything. Yeah, I've heard of people, I've heard of Shopify more as, and I'm sure you could probably resell, but I've heard of it more of like a private label market where, you know, you have a t-shirt, you some kind of merch you want to, throw up that you could um, put that on Shopify. But I'm like you and I haven't looked at it, um, haven't given it any thought as far as can I resell or should I resell on Shopify? So just no knowledge there. 
Terry asked this, do either of you cross post? You tried that, right? You were you were sampling with that, I think. Yeah, I played around with Merc Mercari starting in September. Um, I just I wanted to do a 30 day test. I put 10 items from a variety of different categories. So used clothes, new, new clothes, um, some hard goods, some mugs. I put a record up there just <clears throat> to kind of see you know what would happen. And I sold a total of one item up there. Um, and I've actually still have a lot of stuff, probably like six or seven items that are listed up there um, that just sold one. And so that's, I guess, now a, a 90 day trial period. No, 120 day trial period at this point. Yeah. So th there was a transition that happened with Mercari, I think, in October when they, they raised their fees. So I think their fees now are about comparable to what eBay fees are. I think they're almost exactly the same now. So I think that was one of one of one of the advantages that people liked as resellers on Mercari is the lower fees. But now since it's a level playing field, I've heard others say that who do cross posts say that they've had Mercari slow so that slow down for them. So they're putting more emphasis in, into uh, eBay. But I, you know, I can't speak from my own experience besides my 10 listings that really didn't move very well. Yeah, I, I uh, you're a lot farther than I am. I am. I haven't cross posted on anything only ebay for me uh, next question bruce asked any tips on how to sell when you're at a zero rating and bruce i would just suggest um first of all just remember that you don't only get feedback when you sell you get feedback when you buy and a lot of times when people see a zero by your name or your username they think you possibly could be a scammer they don't always associate you as a scammer but there's kind of that stigma. So what I would do is go on, make a couple, you know, two, three, four quick purchases, buy like things you need around the house, get a toothbrush, get, you know, toiletries, whatever you can. Um, if you're going to buy it already, instead of going to Amazon, get it on, on eBay. Once you pay, you should get a quick, immediate feedback that will bump you up from like a zero to, you know, a two or three, depending on how many transactions you have. And that three could be a huge difference than, having a zero by your uh, handle. So that's a great question because there are a lot of there, you know, Chris, I'm noticing a lot of people are getting into reselling, especially with COVID hitting and some people are out jobs or they're, you know, maybe they got, you know, from they got like reduced from part time to or from full time to part time. And they're trying to figure out how can I make an extra 500 bucks a month. And so there are just tons of new people jumping on eBay to sell and at least look at options there. Yeah, absolutely. That's good advice, Jason, for sure. I buy a lot of stuff on, on eBay, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I sell a lot on eBay, but I buy a lot. All my uh, shipping supplies I buy there, um, just like uh, office supply sort of stuff, I buy it on eBay. Try to support the little guy uh, as opposed to Amazon. Nothing wrong with Amazon, but if I can get something for a similar price on eBay and put that money in the pocket of someone like me who's, who's maybe doing it part-time or full-time, um, you know, and using that money to feed yeah. their family. I, I take that all day. I buy clothing on there. Um, I'm, anytime I'm, if I'm buying new clothing, which isn't very often, I'm going to buy it on eBay um, from someone else who's a reseller. Yeah. You know, my general rule is, you know, I, I love the research model. So I go out, find out what I want. And then I check eBay because Amazon's kind of like, you know, the full price is kind of my mindset of Amazon. You're paying full price. Uh, you may get a great deal, but eBay is kind of the, can I get it 10, 20% lower than what I would at Amazon? So I always check eBay first. And if I can order anything from there, um, I will. So great question, Bruce. And uh, best of luck getting your eBay store up and going or your eBay account up and going. I don't know if you have a store. Kathy asked if we ever iron shirts. I don't, never have. <laughs> I, I rarely iron the shirts that I have. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, I there think were... I ironed like one that I sold on eBay. And that was probably when I first got started. And I said, you know what? I, I'm not doing that again. Yeah. A lot of time. And that is a question, not ironing, but washing clothes that people ask quite a bit on TikTok is, uh, do, you, do you wash your clothes? And there's just no way that I would have time to do that. I mean, probably 1% of the time or maybe even less. That's probably overcutting it, but it's only if it like just as musty or smells. Other than that, I don't, I don't touch it. I sell it as is. <clears throat> um, there was another question that came in. Where did it go? Here it is. 
Brent asks, when you list on eBay, do you set a buy it now price? So what's your philosophy there? I think your buy it now is right. Oh, absolutely. I just, I only do buy it now. I, I don't think I've ever run an auction, uh, at least not since I've started my store. I think back in the nineties when I was on eBay, when I would just buy some stuff and flip some stuff that I had laying around the house, I think maybe I did some auctions way back when. Um, but right now, I, I don't think since I opened my store two and a half years ago, I don't think I've done a single auction. Yeah. And, and you know, eBay has shifted from uh, and this is a great question, Brent. eBay has shifted from that auction mentality to now it's, I would say, predominantly buy it now. If you do a, just like go search for any item, you're going to find most people are selling it, buy it now, not auction. And, you know, quick tidbit on that. If you're, you know, starting off, I'm not sure where you are in your experience, but um, you only want to list those items as auctions that are in high demand that will attract a lot of bidders. You don't want one bid going for the minimum price. You just lose out a lot of money. And especially if you're selling clothing, it's not the right market for auctions. So, you know, there's always an exception to that rule. But I would say, you know, I'm I'm all buy it nows as well. And uh, yeah, great question. Um, do you all end your listings on eBay and relist them regularly? Landshark Picker, thanks for this question. I, I don't, Landshark. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I kind of just let it go. And, um, you know, about every four to six months, I'll kind of get into a mode where I want to kind of freshen things up. I'll go through and I'll bulk edit and I'll just like, you know, kind of shape up pictures or titles or just um, tighten things up just a little bit and make things a little um, crisper in my store, maybe lower prices or just kind of look at things and make sure that my listing is okay. And sometimes when you're editing listings like that, it does generate um, some sales from that. But very rarely do I end and relist just because every time I do that, it's 10 cents to relist. So it's kind of um, costly if you've got a bunch of listings to keep relisting them every so often. So I don't. Do you do anything with that, Chris? Or do you just kind of let it roll for a while? From time to time, if you if you remember back in the spring when COVID first uh, launched, yeah. eBay did a lot of free listing deals where you could, they just said, look, you can have unlimited free listings or 25,000 free listings, right? So at that point in time, I was churning through, and I think you were too, Jason, like just going through and anything that was more than a few months old, I was just going, like every day I'd go and do like 10, 20, 30 of those and end and relist. It definitely helped. Um, yeah, for sure. I, I do it from time to time now. Like I'll if I'll go through and and end some some really old listings that are six eight months old and just you know from time to time here and there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that eBay saying here's fifty thousand free listings, and then it was like, okay, that's worth it. But it was it's very time consuming to go through and do that because it's like if you're going to end and relist, you might as well check it and make sure you know that it, it looks good and it doesn't need a little refresher. Colts Comics says two flipping dudes knows how to party. Jeremy, what's going on? Uh, here's a great question. Oh, no, that's sorry. I clicked on the wrong one. What is up with the reseller beard? I got one too. I guess there's power in the reseller beard. Thanks, Nab. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions. If you do have questions, please put them in the chat and we'll we'll uh, try our best to answer them if we have time tonight. Um, I did want to, you know, we've got a little time before we play our flipping game. We've got five or 10 minutes. Um, I wanted to touch base, um, come back around and get an update, you know, and, and I can provide one as well. But how are the shipping delays going since we last spoke about, you know, everything kind of going down over before Christmas and what's been going on with you in that world? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to do a live look right now. I got my my uh, sold and shipped items. I'm taking a look through. It looks like I'm going to I'm looking for a couple like critically old. I still have some pretty old stuff. No, most of it's been delivered though now. Even some things that were uh, two and three weeks in transit. I have one pretty December 18th. I guess is 12 days now. Uh, that's a pretty long one. But yeah, it looks like most stuff is delivered. There's a few things here and there. Um, my guess is that they're probably in the Northeast or like you know, in some of the big metro areas that had some of the worst delays. Oh, never mind. This really old one from the 18th was is going to Canada. So 
that oh, usually wow. takes about two to three weeks anyway. So that's pretty standard fare. Yeah, most everything is showing delivered at this point. And I've even had some really quick deliveries uh, over the past couple of days, like normal delivery times, like priority that actually took two to three days. And yeah, it actually took four or five days. It's so weird when that happens. It's like, how did this one get through and just get to the buyer in two days? And this other one sitting here for two weeks, I, I don't know. I think uh, I had some really crucial ones last time. And I can't remember what I shared on the live, but I had two or three where I, I had kind of said that, you know, if I, if it didn't start moving within a week, I was going to just go ahead and refund because it had already been two to three weeks. Well, thankfully those two or three really old ones started to move and they delivered and got positive feedback and good there. But I think I've got probably six or seven that are 10 days or older right now, still showing sitting in my USPS facility here in Fayetteville. So, um, buyers have been pretty chill, same, you know, like they've reached out a couple of them, but you know, I'm actually really surprised at how understanding people are and just giving patience in this time and not, um, you know, not really um, responding with that frustrated message. You know, most people are like, OK, yeah, I figured it was, you know, delays. No worries. I'll get it when I get it. And it's like that makes a huge difference than having someone who just rips you and is like, I want my item, you know. Yeah, it was a lot more like a pleasant experience than I thought it was going to be. I had a lot of late orders. I think at one point I had uh, 50% of my orders were at least two days late. And I thought it was going to be a horror show. But I think what the difference with this year compared to normal years, even though it was slower shipping than normal holiday seasons, it was in the news a lot. Um, you know, right, if yeah. people experienced it back in March already. There was a lot of delays and weird scanning stuff with USPS because they had staffing issues back in March. So I think people, it's just been in the news so much. I think people were just sort of bracing for it. And I think a lot of people ordered early too. Um, yeah. Most years people don't, they wait to the last second. I think this year people actually <laughs> did by and large. So, yeah, I mean, it was definitely on our minds. We were like right after Thanksgiving, we were like, we need to get this ordered soon. And uh, we only had one, actually it showed up on time. So it was, we had a late Christmas celebration, but um, yeah, everything's going well. And for those, you know, I don't expect this to clear up anytime in the next week. I think it's going to be quite some time before all of this clears. And, you know, obviously, you know, we're not getting an influx of Christmas gifts going through USPS, but still there are a lot of facilities that have a lot of packages just sitting there. So it is going to take time and with COVID um, there are people out. It's just going to, we're going to have to be patient and kind of wait through this. But, um, yeah, thankfully people are, thankfully people are really being patient. Here's a question from Terry. What's the longest you let an item stay in your store if it hasn't sold? I mean, I, I don't know about you, Jason. I mean, I, I just let I, I just let it ride unless for some reason I've learned something about that item that tells me that it probably won't sell. Like if I've learned that that brand, for instance, has you know gone out of favor or the prices have just totally tanked or something like that, I, I just I, I let it ride. Um, to be honest, uh, of course yeah. I've only been doing this for two and a half years, so you know maybe at three and a half years I might bail out on some stuff that I bought in 2018 at that point. Um, but yeah, I've, I think I've donated a few items that I'm like, you know, uh, this thing's just not going to sell. Um, you know, it's just fallen out of favor or I thought it was a good item two and a half years ago and it's not anymore. I think those things will move on from, but yeah, yeah. Otherwise, sure. if it's, if it's good inventory, um, I'm just going to keep it up. Yeah. I, I'm with you on that. And, um, Terry, I don't know if you've watched our show before or not, but we're about to play a game in which we talk about one of the, the slowest moving items for us. And it's just proof that stuff still sells. I mean, even two years later, I think I've had an item, you know, it went for two and a half years, maybe three years later than when I listed it. And although that's not ideal, it still is proof that it still sells. And so, um, you know, and a lot of times, you know, it will go at full price. You know, if I, um, I've tried the whole like, reduce the inventory down to like 10 bucks. And for some reason that just did not work. I mean, I would reduce it to where it was like I was breaking even and still not moving. So I just bumped it back up and I wait until the offer comes in. And then when the offer comes in, then I just go a lot more um, liberally on accepting that offer. But yeah, that's a great question. And, and there are items that will sit and sell eventually. So 
Um, but everyone has their own strategy and not to say that Chris or I are doing it the way that you should, but that's just how we do it. And it works for us. And, you know, you figure out what works for you. And if you want to get rid of the hundred oldest items you have or the 50 oldest and take them and donate them and get a tax write off, you know, do that too. So I have done that once before, donated like a hundred items just to get old inventory out. Um, let's do this last question and then let's move on to our game. I'm excited about our game, but Ginger asked this. I always list high because I expect offers, but am I scaring away buyers? Well, Ginger, I would say, um, how high are you listing? Um, you know, if I do uh, like a sold comp um, search, and let's just say I'm searching for this phone, and let's pretend this phone sells for between fifty and a hundred dollars. Low side would be fifty, obviously. High side, a hundred. Um, I would say as long as you're in that range, I mean, if you're outside of that, then you probably are too high. But there are other things that play into this as well. How do your pictures look? Is your title title like, does it have all the descriptors in there? You know, you want to make sure that's being seen. And are, are you getting views? Um, if you're getting a lot of views, but no one's making offers, it, it could be a number of things. But, um, you know, honestly, I wouldn't say it's bad to list high because I tend to list high because I accept offers. And I just know that once you have an offer come in, then you can work with them. And sometimes when you list high, you'll sell high. So um, that's kind of my philosophy. I don't think it's necessarily a wrong thing. Um, it just depends on how high you're listing. And, you know, um, I, I would say the higher you list, and this is maybe a tip, the higher you list, the more important it is for you to promote because most buyers, you know, if you're thinking like a buyer, most people are going to click that lowest price first and yours is going to be pushed way down at the bottom of the search results. And so you want to make sure that you're at least promoting it some so that it does show up at the top as an option, you know, from time to time. So that's what I would suggest on that question. That's a really good point about the promoting. If you're going to list on the high end of the market, like if you're going to be at the you know 90th or 100th percentile, meaning like you're listing with the highest items, I think that's it's a no brainer to promote those items, even if you don't typically promote and I promote just about everything. But even if you don't typically promote, if you want to overprice something, Ginger, five to seven dollars and then promote it by a few percent. And that costs you maybe 75 cents uh, in promotion yeah. fees. Like to me, that that would make a lot of sense, because the other thing is that that item's going to get out to people who are Googling, too. That's the other thing that promoted items does. So somebody could not even really not even be an eBay or not even be an eBay user at all. They could be looking for that item. It shows up in their Google shopping search mm -hmm. um, and then they pick up that item and they're not even looking at the competition on eBay. Right. They just saw your item and your item only. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. And show me pickers. I, you know, I didn't know that about promoting that it goes out to Google. So that's, I mean, that's a great, obviously great um, uh, addition to just being promoted within eBay. But show me pickers says promote at least 5%. Uh, I'm just curious, since we are talking about promoted, what do you, what's your promoted listing strategy, Chris? Like, what do you, do you promote everything the same? Like, what, what do you do with that? I say I, I promote about 95% of my inventory. So the 5% that I don't promote are items where I don't have any competition or much competition, right? If I have like a certain shirt that's a, a 2XL and I know that there's only like, you know, one or two or three or zero of those listed, I'm not going to promote it. Um, why bother? Um, it's going to show up at the top of the, the search results anyway, so I don't bother then. Um, but most of those 95% that I do promote, I do at a 1.9% rate. Don't ask me like how I arrived at that number. Um, I tried different promotion strategies in the past. I don't know that there's any like I didn't do like a scientific study on it but I think the minimum you can promote is one um, so sometimes I'll do 1.1 just in case someone else promoted at the middle the minimum maybe my mine shows up a little bit higher but all my stuff's 1.9 wow that's uh that's actually really low compared to what I do and you know I've, I've heard of other people going just like straight one percent across the board um, you know I you know I started I would say this one, when I started to promote, which I didn't promote for a while until probably a year and a half ago, that's when my sales really increased. Now, yes, I did pay to promote, but um, that's when I kind of took off as a store when I was promoting and kind of makes sense. You're obviously paying for that. It wouldn't, they wouldn't charge if it didn't work, but um, yeah. So if you're not promoting those who are listening, maybe something you want to consider, especially if you're in some categories where there are tons of results and you're getting lost in you know, the bottom pages. Um, Show Me Picker says, we started three months ago and it changed my world. Yeah, I mean, promoted listings, 
it obviously works. So um, what I do, since I asked the question, um, I tend to go at the ad rate and then I will just say, um, do the suggested ad rate, but don't exceed 7%. So if the ad rate is 10%, the trending rate, I mean, is 10%, I will only max out at seven. And that way it just guarantees that, um, you know, that I don't go over a certain amount. And for those items like cycling gear or golf attire, those are always like around that trending at like 3%. So I don't want to promote at seven if it's trending at three. So that's kind of how I do it. Um, those of you that are asking about the, the promoted listings. So yeah, but you know what? That, that's a great question to end on. And um, I think we should play a flipping game. What do you think? Absolutely. I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Those that are new, we've got a game and Chris will introduce it here in a second. And we are going to need your help. All right, y'all. So let's play a flipping game. So we have five questions. Uh, our answers are all going to be based on the last seven days of sales and the last seven days of fines. It's Jason versus Chris. It's one winner. I am your two-time defending champion. I am 2-0. and oh. I'm looking to defend that. And just as a reminder, the scoreboard from last week right here from the 23rd, Chris from the shirts, three to Jason in the shoes, two. It was a tight battle. It came down to question number five, which is our audience participation question. That said, let's jump right in with our game with question number one. What was the biggest sale of the week biggest sale of the week you want me to go first yeah do it all right i'm gonna show you my screen here this is going to be very similar to what i showed you last week because i had two of these cabela's like older quilted puffer jackets or coats and uh this is what i used last week this is another one sold this week this one went for 72 dollars with shipping Got a best offer on it. And this was a 5XL, as you can see up here in the uh, in the title. So yeah, $72 on that one. That's my flip of the week. Nice flip. Is that the biggest jacket you've ever sold? It's got to be. 5XL, that's probably the biggest item I've sold. All right. All right. I think I got you for question number one. If you want to share my screen, Jason, please. All right. Here we go. Boom. There it is. This is actually the biggest sale that I've ever had as a reseller in my, in my two and a half years of doing this. Uh, I picked up this card, um, let's see, back in October. I think I wrote it down somewhere. Picked it up back in October. I paid $575 for it. Uh, that in October was right after the C NBA season had finished. Uh, so the prices had gone down. I picked it up then knowing that Jaws is one of the biggest guys in the sport. I believe in him a lot. I think he's a great player. I think he's got to crush it. And NBA is back. I think we're in week two of the NBA right now, or actually oh. just started last yeah. Wednesday, literally seven days ago. So the card, you know, it's white hot again. Here hot. We go. Yeah. Timing is everything. And guess what? John Morant uh, turned his ankle the next day after I sold this. <laughs> He's going to be out for uh, three to five weeks, I think with an ankle sprain. So timing is everything with these cards, but man, I'm grateful for that huge flip. Great profit for me. Super psyched about that. And, uh, Yes, I keep checking the uh, the tracking for that one to make sure that that thing shows up. It's going all the way to Utah. For those that didn't see Chris's TikTok on that, I, I had to show my wife because it was like into the bubble wrap, into the box, into the padding, into the box, into the padding, into the... I was like, I mean, but for $1,100, you have to, uh, you know, got to make sure to uh, protect that bad boy so nothing happens to it. It's a great sale there. One to zero. Shirts one, shoes zero. Let's move on to question number two. Question number two is biggest profit from the last seven days. What's the one item that you sold for the biggest profit? Uh, I can go first for this yeah, one. Go for it. Just let me know when you're ready. I'm ready when you are. All right. So boom, here we have it. I picked up uh, four of these. Jalen Brown, one of my favorite players, go Celtics. Picked up four of these cards back in October. Again, uh, right after the NBA season, the market was down. Love Jalen Brown. Paid $750 a piece for him, so $31 total. Sold yesterday uh, for a hundred. a best offer of $100 plus $495 shipping. My total wow. profit on that item. Wait for it. $57 after shipping and fees. Dang. That is, that's a good profit. 
You are in on the sports card market tonight. Well, I'll show you mine. Um, let's see here. I've got the, uh, what was the biggest profit? Bear with me here. Sold these Hoka 1-1 Clifton running shoes. Hoka is a great brand. Um, I had these for uh, 6383 with 10 shipping, and I got a best offer of 55 plus 10. Took it for 65 bucks. I didn't get to the $50 mark. It was just under total profit on those with fees subtracted was $48.59. So you got me in round two. That's, a, that's an awesome flip, though. I love those Hoka's. They sell so great. I've sold those Clifton's a bunch, although I don't think I've had the Clifton 5. Yeah, Hoka all around the board. Great, great shoes. Love it when I find Hoka's. Updated flipping scoreboard. And I make up some ground here. What's wrong with shirts? Three. Shirts, two. Shoes, nothing. Let's move to question number three. We have everyone's favorite, the fastest sale this week. Fastest sale. All right, I'll take this one first. And this is a new thing that I'm picking up. If you've been watching my TikTok at all, you've been noticing that I'm picking up these. Um, can you all see that out there, the, the serving bowls? This was like a, a really cool, Highmark is the brand, and it was a really cool like Italian theme there in the middle. Um, it picked up this large serving bowl, and then it had four like dinner bowls. So five pieces total. I got $45 plus, uh, sorry, $40 offer plus 25 shipping, 65 all in. This one sold four days and 14 hours after listing it. So four days and 14 hours. Nice quick flip. And uh, I love seeing you play in those different categories. Most people know you as a clothing reseller and, and there you are kind of exploring Mix on the, the fringes of the thrift store. Now that's cool. That's right. Mix it up. All right. I'm ready with mine. If you are, you got it. Boom. So there's my fastest flip. Uh, this I picked up last Wednesday uh, was that Wednesday? Yeah, I picked it up last Wednesday. I listed it on Thursday, which was Christmas Eve. It sold Christmas morning at 9.35 a.m. It was wow. listed for a total of 18 hours. You're like, why did this thing sell so fast? It's all about the size here. It's so, it. 3XL. Yeah, it's uh, on the tag. You can see it is a 1935, which is based on the measurements. It's a basically a, a 3F, 3XL. So I actually have another one that i picked up it's an in inventory i just listed it uh yesterday so hopefully that sells in 18 hours too dude nice flip 3xl that's a great size don't you just love it when you find an item that's larger than a 2xl because i, I feel like once you get to that 3xl and up then it's like more rare 2xl is kind of still a little common even though it's you know not as much but 3XL, it's game on. Or if you can get like 2XL and then you add the T. If you add the tall, oh, now you're talking. I got a couple of those listed today in Cabela's shirt, 2XL talls. All right, category number four. You are up three to zero. And I'm just, I got to make up some ground. I got to get at least a point. Get on the board. We're going with the slowest sale of the week. Go for it, Chris. This is my favorite category. I love getting rid of that old inventory that's been sitting around. So my slowest, you can go ahead and share my screen. I sold some China. So this was a just a cup and saucer set. Uh, the brand is uh, Royal Stewart. I picked this up at a church sale. Uh, that was November the 2nd, 2019. So 423 days ago. And it was literally just a toss in. I bought two sets of China. And this was just like a random, this is the, like the only thing from this brand that was just randomly in the box. So I basically have nothing into it. It sat around and sold today for a best offer uh, yesterday, uh, $14 plus nine shipping. So 23 bucks. So 423 days on the board for that one. Nice. Just out of curiosity, do you remember how much it costs to ship an item like that? Uh, that one, I think. Uh, that was nice, actually. It shipped for seven bucks. Be, uh, priority is one pound four ounces. Actually, I shipped it today. It did sell today. Uh, one pound four ounces, and it was going to Florida. So it probably oh, traveled perfect. like seventy-five yeah. miles or a hundred miles to get to its destination. Yeah. But typically, something like that would cost me. Uh, I would expect it to be between uh, eight fifty and ten dollars. 
Yeah, that's what I would have said. But got, you got to love it when those those items that aren't like the easy to pack up just go a few miles away. And it's like, it doesn't matter how heavy it is. It's still only going to be a couple bucks more. All right. Well, I'll show you this next item, which is the slowest sale of the week for me. This Orvis sweater. Um, it was a men's medium. So that may be a reason why it sat around for a little while. Uh, I'm honestly not sure why, because Orvis is a great brand. And I purchased this on May 10th of 2019, sat around for 593 days. And I think Ginger was the one asking about, you know, do we just get rid of stuff that doesn't sell or take it off? This is a reason why, um, you know, you can let things ride and, and sell it eventually. I think I got, um, they sent an offer of $24 or no, $28 all in on this with shipping. So uh, 20 plus eight shipping. And still 28 bucks, you know, even though it sat for that long, um, was a great flip and still made some money on it, obviously. So case in point that people will eventually come around for it. Those size medium people need clothes too. That's right. Jason, Jason wins the round. Now oh, we have four. Four. shirts, three shoes, yeah. one. We are moving to the last round and this is where we need those that are watching. We need your help. So if you haven't seen this show before, this is where we ask you to tell us the coolest pick, the coolest find of the week. So, so if you're you're gonna vote and you're gonna decide the winner here. So you're gonna vote in the chat. Uh, just put in the chat J for Jason if you think his find was cooler, and C for Chris. But we haven't shown you the finds yet. So let's uh, let's dial those up. Who's going first? I'll go first this round since I went last. I went to Goodwill and. Uh, I got out of the clothing section and I found this next piece. Let's see if you can see that guy right there. This is a Winnie the Pooh and Friends. It's like a candle holder. Well, I say candle holder. You put the candle in the tree trunk right there and then cover it up with this little um, cover and then it lights lights through these um, holes right here to show like Christmas tree illuminations or something. It is a Disney store. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a Disney store um, item, which is always great. And it's all of the Pooh characters. And lastly, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got like glitter on the bottom of this piece. So I paid, um, it was four bucks, half price. So I paid $2 and there was a, an exact sold comp on this for $38 with shipping. So Wow, that's sick. Uh, that's really cool. And they're like, no issues, no cracks, no nothing. Like everything's good. Not at all. Everything looks good. So yeah, definitely something you might consider. But it looks great. Beautiful. Nice find. All right. I had a couple things over here. I was gonna see based on you going first what I was gonna go with. Oh man, dirty. I'm gonna go with my gut though on this one. <laughs> this is the one I wanted to go with. One of my favorite brands. Boom. There it is. You know, I thought that I thought that may come out roar love this thing let's let's let it go look at this thing short sleeve it's the first roar i've found that's short yeah sleeve. embroideries man that thing is yeah. sick i've never seen a short sleeve roar either but wait there's more look at that back embroidery that's ridiculous yeah I'm, then, I'm curious what do you call that do you know because i've had a hard time describing like is that embellished or what is i can't think of the word that you would describe that with I don't know. I'm never, I, I think it's funny. I, I don't know about as much about clothes as I probably should. I should know that sort of stuff. I just call it embroidered and you yeah, know, that's a good word. button up, but I love this little like flower kind of accents in the corners, just super unique. I mean, every roar piece is super unique, but this one, I think this is my favorite one uh, that I've found really cool. Yeah, that's a great piece. Someone's asking, is that a popular brand? It's it's rare as well, but it is a really um, it, very distinct. It look all of them look like that. That thick stitch, the embroidered, the huge graphics. You know, um, very designer esque. So yeah, great great find. So yeah, this is the part where you vote. You, those of you that are watching, put a J in the chat if you think that this Winnie the Pooh candle piece right here is the cooler find of the week and put a c in the chat if you think that the roar shirt is a cooler find what's the best pick there's no stipulation it's basically just what do you think is the coolest you could be you know you could be the world's biggest winnie the pooh fan and you think that's cool you could be a roar fan whatever it is tell us your vote and so while we're waiting on some of these uh votes to come in to see who wins the fifth round 
got some, oh, got a lot coming in now. Got uh, Daniel, oh, hang on. They just like all popped in at once. It looks like I'm going to take this last round. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two, one, two, three. I see three votes for Chris. Possibly four. <laughs> it's tough when you when you break out like break out Disney. Yeah, I mean it's it's tough to beat to beat Disney. That's always a showstopper, especially Winnie the Pooh. Um, and by the <laughs> way, if you're finding Disney stuff when you're out in the wild, Winnie the Pooh is one of the best like yeah. characters, and that whole anyone from that show, Eeyore, every, you know that, that's a those are like hotter items than just any old uh, Disney character. So, but I see you. Thanks for the votes. I see you, Elaine. I see you, Show Me Pickers. I see you, Juan Ramirez. That's right. So I didn't I didn't. Uh... Didn't get the job done, but I did get one point. I got on the board and I got, um, I avoided the shame of losing. Did I get two points? Oh, I did get, because I got the slowest. Okay. Three to two. This is starting to look like a trend, Chris. Three to two. Every week you're up three to zero. It's, it's, a uh, it's a battle every week. It's three to two every week, but, uh, yeah, three Oh, I'm excited. Victorious. Once again, uh, honored to play the game with you and to have a chance to to beat you. I had a good week, though. I mean, it's a you know NBA is hot right now, so uh, I you know I showed up with John Morant and uh, and Jalen Brown. It's tough to when I show up with those dudes in the gym. It's it's gonna be tough to to lose. You know, I mean, I'm I'm ready to go with those two. Yeah, and for those of you that don't know sports cards, it's kind of ridiculous. You know, like when you say you picked up that card for five seventy five, like my mind just goes what. Um, sports cards are, are like right now are not what they used to be. You know, you used to get them, you would hold them for a long time and then hope in 10 or 20 years that, you know, you had a rookie card or that, you know, they be, were worth money. Now they, they trade more like the stock market. So it's so great that Chris made that sale the day or two before, um, John Morant like sprained his ankle because then the value would have gone down. It's, it's wild how fast those cards like go up or down based on like a guy's performance. You know, he goes, you know, 14 out of 20 from the, you know, in a game, then he may go up and if he has a bad game. He may go down. So it's kind of wild. It's absolutely wild. And a big reason why Jaws cards went up so much recently is an opening night a week ago today. He, I think he dropped 44 on that first game. So everyone just sort of like, you know, scrambled and the price went up by, two to three hundred dollars in, in just a, a matter of three or four days yeah so although i'm not uh, gutsy enough to get into the sports card market i i uh, applaud you for your big sales this week thanks man i appreciate it i see collectibles in the chat he's saying does that make chris a 2020 two flipping dudes champion does he get a trophy and i think that's a great question i don't know well, you know, I mean, this is the last, I didn't think about that, but it's the last live show of 2020. So I would say you got 2020 in the books. I feel good about it. Uh, <laughs> I think 2021 is going to be your year. You know, collectibles, if you want to send a trophy to Chris, I bet he would put it up right behind him on that table back there to be displayed for all of us to see. I would, yeah, that'd be great. I'll put it right next to that San Francisco snow globe that actually won me the game last week, I believe, if I'm remembering right. So, yeah, I'll put it right next to that trophy. <laughs> All right. Well, we're wrapping up tonight. We do have one last question, um, the question of the night. Let me find it here. And it is this. So, those of you that are watching live tonight with us, feel free to put in the chat your answer to this question. What is your favorite section at the thrift store? So when you go into a thrift store, whether it's Goodwill, Salvos, whatever it is, what's the section you go to first to make sure that you look for the good stuff? So Chris, what about you? What's your favorite section? That's a great question. Um, it's interesting. I have like a little bit of a routine at each store that I go to. I don't necessarily go to my favorite one first, but my favorite section, I mean, everybody knows this, it's, it's, it's men's dress shirts. And I start right with the, uh, that, that section that's like triple XL, quadruple XL, you know, like the two XL plus, like that's, that's my jam right there. Long sleeves, big yeah. sizes with buttons down the front. That's, uh, that's where I'm going. Nice. I, uh, I'll, I'll let you know in a sec. I, I honestly, they don't, um, categorize by size here. So it's just all the men's shirts are put on the rack. 
and it's not like there's an Excel section or a larger section. So it's kind of just a, a random pick for me as to um, what I'm going to get. But looks like uh, Show Me Pickers Electronics, Trisha says Toys, Terry, China, and Glasser. A lot of random, uh, or not random, but a lot of different comments on this question. Juan says Hard Goods, Elaine, Men's Clothes, Collectibles, Pyrex, and the Glass Isle. Wow. I'm going to have to agree with Ginger here. This was going to be my answer. Shoes and men's. Shoes are the first thing that I look at. And um, when I was in Colorado, it was hands down the place I would go to first because you could find those $50 shoes, 60 bucks. You pay $10 and you've got $30 profit compared to a shirt where you make like 12 to 15. But um, here in Arkansas, they're just not as great. And it's, it's, it's very rare that I would find a pair or that I would walk out with more than a pair from a store. So I don't find shoes here that often, but it's my favorite section to go to as of right now. 5280 finds toys and board games. And the grumpy thrifter says blazers. So wide assortment of answers to that question. You guys have been very active and uh, in the chat tonight. I really appreciate it. It's, it makes the lives just a lot more fun when people are interacting with us here. Yeah, I agree. I can't tell you how much joy it brings me to see uh, all these folks who I watch on TikTok and YouTube and they're here in, in the comment section sharing uh, ideas and sharing sharing love. It's, it's just cool. Yeah, I agree. Well, guys, time has come for us to say goodbye in the year of 2020 on our Two Flippin' Dudes show. Chris, this has been a lot of fun and I would dare say my favorite Two Flippin' Dudes show so far. I would agree with that. Uh, what do you think? Are we going to do this again? Are we going to do it in 2021? Uh, we should just wait until next year, you know? <laughs> you know, just put it on the back burner and just get to it next year at some point. I'm with you, man. Well, hey, uh, to everybody, uh, well, to you, Jason, and to everybody out there, I uh, want to wish everybody a, a happy new year. It is resolution time. So I, I'm curious, maybe we'll check in with people next week. What are, what are those resolutions and how are they going? Uh, we're reverting back next week. We're going to be on Thursday nights. We shifted to Wednesday nights for the last two weeks because of the holidays. But we'll be back at our normally scheduled time, our regular time, Thursday 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central next week. Looking forward to that. So we got eight days to find cool stuff and eight days to have big sales for our game this time. So maybe we'll have uh, some of the, some real big numbers, some real cool stuff. That's right. So next Thursday, those of you that are joining us live, come join us again next Thursday. We'd love to see you there and just have a fun time as well. All right, well, everyone, we are signing off. This is Jason saying see you later. Peace out. Peace.